Acid reflux or heartburn is a fairly common condition affecting millions of people annually. Not only is it painful and uncomfortable, but if left untreated, it can actually result in an increase in the risk of setting cancers. Hi, my name is Kweku and I am a pharmacist. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing three classes of medications that are available over the counter for the treatment or management of heartburn or acid reflux. For each class, we're going to take a look at what it is best suited for or the best case scenario to use that medication. We will look at how it works. We will look at some common side effects as well as some pros and cons of each class. So without much ado, let's dive straight into it. The first class we're going to be looking at is antacids. Yes, regular antacids like Tums, Rolates, Magnesium Hydroxide, Maalox, Mylanta, that group. They are best suited for, you know, one-off times when you have acid reflux, say maybe you had a heavy meal, you're feeling uncomfortable, you have some indigestion, then that is when those are best suited for. These antacids work by neutralizing the acid that is in the stomach. So it doesn't stop or reduce any acid production. It just goes there and neutralizes the acid. Side effects in this class tend to be very mild and they may include constipation, diarrhea, and nausea. So it turns out that the constipation is typically caused by the calcium containing antacid, so for example, Tums, while the diarrhea is caused by the magnesium containing salts. The advantages of antacids is that they are quick acting. I mean, they, they go into the system and within five to 10 minutes, you may start experiencing relief. They're also relatively inexpensive and they're available, widely available over the counter. The disadvantages though is that they are relatively short acting. It may only last about 60 minutes tops. So you realize that if it's something that you need for a recurring situation, that may not be ideal. One word of caution though is that for people who have a, who have a history of kidney stones or who have recurring kidney stones, taking too much calcium may actually precipitate that situation. So you need to be careful if you have a history of kidney stones to watch out which of these antacids that you take on a regular basis. The second group we're gonna be looking at are histamine blockers or what we typically call H2 receptor blockers. Common examples in this group include famotidine or pepsid or cymetidine or tagamet or until recently uranitidine or Zantac, which unfortunately has been pulled off the market because the FDA found that it contains high levels of a, a chemical that is potentially carcinogenic. I must say that to date though, neither famotidine or Cymetidine has been found to contain any of those compounds or chemicals that are deemed to be carcinogenic. H2 receptor blockers are best suited for reflux that occurs occasionally, maybe one or two times a week. So how do H2 receptor blockers work? Unlike the antacids, which only neutralize the acid that is in the body, H2 receptor blockers actually reduce acid production. This they do by blocking a compound in your body called histamine. Histamine is somewhat responsible for producing acid in the stomach. So by blocking histamine, you reduce acid secretion. Side effects of H2 blockers are generally mild and they may include diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, drowsiness, muscle ache, and abdominal pain. Advantages of H2 receptor blockers include the fact that they are relatively quicker acting, not as quick as the antacids, but definitely better than the next class that we'll talk about. They also provide somewhat of a better acid reduction or protection from acid reflux than the antacids do. The disadvantage though is that they generally tend to have a few more side effects compared to the antacids, and they are also slightly more expensive than the antacids. Now, if you find yourself needing your H2 receptor blockers more frequently, or if you're experiencing acid reflux more than two times a week, then it is about time you take a look at the next class, which are called proton pump inhibitors, or we call them PPIs for short. Now, this class is very popular and include medications like omeprazole or Prilosec, esomeprazole or Nexium, Pantoprazole or, or Protonix, and a host of others. Now, PPIs are best suited for reflux that occurs more often. So if you are getting reflux maybe two, more than two times a week, then, there's a, then it's a good time to start looking at proton pump inhibitors. PPIs also work by reducing acid production in the stomach. By a series of mechanisms, they block a certain enzyme that is also responsible for acid production in the stomach. The ability of uh, this class, the PPIs, to block acid in the stomach tends to be superior to the H2 receptor blockers that we just talked about. So on the whole, the PPIs will provide you better coverage for acid reflux relative to the, the H2 receptor blockers. So PPIs like Nexium and Omeprazole or Prilosec are best taken on an empty stomach, usually about 30 minutes to one hour before food. 
this is when it works best because it works best when your body is actually actively secreting acid and this is usually in the morning before breakfast the side effect profile of this class of medication is kind of similar to the h2 receptor blockers and it includes headache abdominal pain flatulence nausea and diarrhea the biggest pro or the biggest advantage for this class of medication is that they generally provide better protection from acid reflux or they provide better relief the disadvantages though is number one is relatively expensive compared to the other ones number two is that it also takes longer for you to feel the its effect it can take as much as up to four days for you to feel the maximum benefit of it so if you need relief right now you're probably better off taking an antacid or an h2 blocker than a ppi Another relatively significant disadvantage with PPIs is that in recent times, it's been associated with a, a lot of conditions, which if you have a history of any of those, you need to be careful before you, you, you take PPIs. And these conditions include an increased risk in fractures, low levels of vitamin B12, low levels of magnesium, increased risk of pneumonia, and increased risk of dementia. So if you have a history of any of these, or if you think you are a high risk for any of these, it would be a good idea to, first of all, have a discussion with your doctor to make sure that you're actually even a good candidate to be taking this class of medication. So that's a very high level overview of the classes of medications that are available over the counter to treat acid reflux. If you want more detailed review of the individual medications, I'll put some on the screen right now. You can check it out. Thank you so much for staying through. And if you have benefited in any way from this video, I'll ask you to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Thank you and I'll catch you on the next video.